a total solar eclipse is in most astronomers opinions the most spectacular thing you can ever see it is a parade of color and of changes and of feelings and experiences that unfold very quickly and very spectacularly my name is rick feinberg i'm an astronomer and I am the project manager of the American Astronomical Society's Solar Eclipse Task Force. So it's important to know that during the total phase of a total solar eclipse, when the moon is completely blocking the sun's bright face, and this only happens if you're in the path of totality, it is perfectly safe to look at the sun without any eye protection because the totally eclipsed sun, when the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona shines forth, is only about as bright as a full moon. So it's just as safe to look at. But at any other time, during the partial phases that precede and follow totality and the entirety of a partial solar eclipse, which is all you'll get if you're outside the path, you must use some kind of safe eye protection because the sun, even if it's only a thin sliver, is so very bright that looking at it for more than a second or so is going to cause damage to your retina. So we recommend that people equip themselves with eclipse viewers. They come as uh, in the form of cardboard framed eyeglasses or uh, plastic framed eyeglasses. Also uh, little cardboard handheld viewers, sometimes thick cardboard. Um, and they have special filters in them that are supposed to meet a certain international standard called ISO 12312-2. You'll often see that number printed on these products. That if, if a product meets that standard, then it is perfectly safe to use to look directly at the sun. The ISO 12312-2 standard is both a standard of what makes a solar viewer safe, but also what makes a solar viewer usable. It specifies the maximum amount of light that can get through, not just in visible light, but also in ultraviolet and also in the infrared. Solar eclipse glasses, a solar viewer, is at least a thousand times darker than the, even the dark ordinary sunglasses. So if you can see anything through it other than the sun, you should be concerned. So what I tell people is look around in the house. If you can see things, you see detail in the house, your glasses aren't dark enough. If they pass the indoor test, take them outside. Don't look at the sun, just look at the landscape. Again, if you can see the landscape through the glasses, they're not dark enough. Now, if you pass that test, you've looked inside the house, you've looked outside the house, and you don't basically see anything. Take a brief glance at the sun on a sunny day. Don't wait for April 8th. If the sun looks round and sharp edged and comfortably bright, your glasses are almost certainly safe. The reason I say almost certainly is because genuinely safe eclipse glasses will also block most of the sun's ultraviolet and infrared radiation. We only see the visible light, but there is ultraviolet light, which you know can damage your corneas. It's one of the reasons we end up with uh, cataracts, too much exposure to solar ultraviolet. And infrared radiation is heat radiation. So the last thing you want to do is cook your retina. The last thing I want anybody to do if they haven't been able to get their hands on eclipse glasses or other solar viewers is to decide that there's no safe way to view the eclipse, so they have to skip it. There are other safe ways to view a solar eclipse. Uh, the most common one is what we call pinhole projection. It's a bit of a misnomer because you can use holes that are bigger than the ones made by a pin. Um, a very simple pinhole projector is just to take your hands and create a little waffle pattern with your finger. And then projection is done with the sun at your back. So you put the sun at your back and you look at the shadow of your hands with the crossed fingers on the ground. And you'll see little crescent suns in between the shadows of your fingers. Or you've created pinholes with your fingers. 
Another great pinhole projector is a colander from your kitchen or a perforated spoon that you would use to strain soup. Anything with a bunch of small holes in it makes a great pinhole projector. The only time pinhole projection doesn't work is if you happen to be in the path of totality during the few minutes when the sun is completely blocked by the moon. The sun in total eclipse is faint enough that it's not going to create uh, pinhole images through any of these projectors that I was describing. But during the partial phases, or even when there's no eclipse at all, uh, you can use pinhole projection to see an image of the sun. There's no denying that seeing a total solar eclipse is a very emotional experience. And it's partly because it's so beautiful, partly because things happen so fast that the pace is breathtaking and it's hard to keep up with how fast things are changing. As the moon finally covers the sun, and then again a few minutes later as the moon begins to uncover it. And what you see in between those two moments is just, you know, unbelievably spectacular. As soon as the eclipse is over, you want to see another one.